so good to see you, bro. Thank you very much for having me. Mm. Cape Town, how is the love every time you come out here in Cape Town? Oh, uh, Cape Town is almost like a second home, you know. Um, if there's ever another city that I go to, it's probably like the third city that I visit the most, I yeah. think, I guess. Um, have a lot of business relationships here, have a lot of uh, family here, friends, um, a lot of fellow artists and musicians. So it's it's almost like a third home, I guess, to a certain degree. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Nice vibes. You know, to me, to us, the fans, Reason is an icon. Yeah. But who is Reason back in Tembisa? Uh, sure. I guess... Hmm. Reason, first of all, is Sizwe, I guess. You know, he's Sizwe, he's a, he's a son, he's a father, mm. he's, a, he's a musician, he's a, a businessman, I guess, or let's say entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm a creative, I'm a designer, I'm an artist, I'm a, you know, I'm a bunch of things, you know what I mean? Um, outside of being Reason, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lot of things. But I guess to, the, to answer your question, I'm human. <laughs> I'm human. Okay. I'm human. I'm just on my grind, man. I mean, overall, I like calling myself like a general creative, you know, um, and everything that I sell, everything that I do, everything that I present, every type of business that I'm trying to get involved in has a lot to do with creativity. So I'm just a, an ordinary black, young black, gifted human being who's just trying to shine. So first off, congratulations on audio redefinition. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Audio redefinition is out now. Go yeah. get it. It's a great album, a.k.a. Kuli. Kidex, Mashaya Puka, everyone's there. Yeah. So dope, man. The album is so dope. But like from your previous albums, you had so much success. Yes. So when I heard you going to put out this album, I got nervous for you. Yes. Because the two albums that you put out first did so well. Yes. So wonderful. The first one was real was a real game changer. Yes. The second one set the trend. Yes. Now this one came out. What was your mindset? Um, I think my mind my mindset right now when it comes to making music, I guess, is to eventually, you know, fulfill international status. You know what I mean? I think that's the whole idea. When it comes to making the music, making the show, um, you know, setting up the relationships, it's always about getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? Um, yeah. Audio redefinition was really like, it, it was even supposed to be like a, a deluxe edition for audio high definition, you know? Mm -hmm. But there was just so much new music, it just didn't make sense for me to re-release it as a deluxe edition. I had to release it as its own product. So it's that. It's just like, it's, 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 there's music, you know? There's even more music now, like a little short, I guess, project that I'm working on for yeah. like Valentine's Day, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm working on a little movie as well. And that has a lot to do with a lot of music, mm -hmm. um, making soundtracks for, you know, TV series. So a lot of it has a lot to do with just creating music and being a musician. Because, I mean, for me, I don't think you ever be treated or become a musician or respected as a musician if you don't keep releasing music. You know, you, yeah. we can't call you a photographer without photos. We can't call you a carpenter without tables so, mm -hmm. or chairs or whatever. So for me, it's just about me fulfilling that whole idea of me being a musician, you know? Um, and I've grown, I've grown, you know, they're like diaries. You know, the yeah. first one was a diary of who I was back then, trying to come into the industry. The second one was a diary of who I was right after coming into the industry. Yeah. The last album was me in the industry and me trying to go further, you know? So going from here, going forward, you, you're still gonna get more of that diary. But you know, when, <coughs> when someone has so much success, yeah. when you're going to do the, the next project, mm. You get so many people that hit on you to be on, on that project because of your success. Right. And I always wonder, like, how do you pick the features for people that you have to use? For example, on this audio redefinition. Yeah. Let's start with Tizi. What, why did you choose to put Tizi on there? Well, I mean, um, mainly because the music, um, mainly because it's always based on the music. I guess it's always based on the feeling, you know. Um, when I went to Tweezy, I, I had this sense. I mean, when we did Audio High Definition, the whole mission was to work with as many non-rap artists as possible. You know, that was the idea was, you know, we can't always just keep being in the rap circles because being in the rap circle is one thing, but if ultimately we're trying to be seen as an artist that our, a 60-year-old can respect and an 18-year-old respect, we have to actually step out of those communities and filter around. So we play around with the Lockenvilles, we do songs with Donald, you know, we do songs with comedians and all that stuff, and that's all just a stretch. So when it comes to, to doing songs with like a Tweezy or doing song with a Mashaya or whatever, mm. you're in the studio literally looking for a feeling, you know, you're feeling some type of way and you, and you wanna channel yourself towards that. So when you call a Tweezy, 
You know, it, when I called Tweezy, it was like I wanted to make young music. You know what I mean? When I called Instro in, I wanted to make, you know, d d d beautiful product. When I called Mashai and I wanted to have an African product. When I called Kidex and I wanted to have a hood product. When I called Mr. Beef, it was just, it's always about the feeling that really channels it. If ever right now I was to decide that I want to make a gospel song, yeah. I would sit and think, who would I call for this gospel? Mm, Sweet song, Lane. You know what I mean? Uh, or maybe. I don't know, a non-gospel artist that can sing gospel well, maybe Wusi. So it's always based on the, the idea that you want to have when it comes to making the music. I guess it's like making dinner. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't necessarily always use the same spices, you know, but you always reach for the right spice, for the right flavor, you know. So, yeah, that's the idea. And, and there's a song of you, Huli and AKA. Yes, sir. How did that come about? It's a very funny, long story, but... <laughs> Um, PH was recording his album from Gianni with Love out now. Go get it on iTunes. Um, and he had a, a bunch of collaborations. He had me on the album. He had Cooley on the album. He had Monel on the album. Yanga, and uh, AKA happened to be one of those many collaborations. Yeah. So they went in to go record his song. But then after they recorded his song, AKA had this verse, and he was like, "Yo, man, I got this verse. I want to fuck around with. What do you got?" Mm -hmm. And then they they played this beat, this EPKA beat, and then AKA recorded. He recorded, and then he recorded the one verse, and then they left it. He since was supposed to come back and finish it off as a song or whatever. Um, I'm working on audio redefinition. I go to PH and PH plays me the song. It's like, yo, I did this song with AKA. Do you wanna do you wanna do something with it? And he plays it. And I'm like, damn, this is so dope. And then randomly we decided, yo, we should actually make his verse the hook because his verse set the tone. He was on that. His verse was that was the one that actually made us, you know, pull up at the party, you know, sitting sideways, yeah. dream so big, about to get a migraine. So so the brief was, so then PH was like, yo, if you're going to jump on this song, we're going to need one, uh, sorry, we're going to need one extra person who's going to jump on, has to maintain this flavor, this is the flow, this is the style. And so we produced it like that. I did it, um, sent it to Cooley, Cooley heard it, he loved it, sent it back the next day, sent it to AKA on some, yo, this is what the song sounds like, this is what we did to it, are you happy with us doing this, are you happy with us going forward? Um, and yeah, everything was, was, was pretty nice. He came back just to tweak a couple of things, but it was, it was quite an interesting process, yeah. It stands out for me. And one other feature that stands out for me, Bad in December. Yes. It's also a dope feature, man. Like, how yes, is sir. it working with Stilo Magolibi and all the other guys? <laughs> Stilo's fine. He's just always got too much gold on him. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun, man. I, actually, doing that song was actually also fun because... You know, me and Zandi come from the same neighborhood. You know, we come from the east, from the east strand together. So, w when he wanted to do a song, it was it was quite interesting. He had the song with the hook already, you know, and it was such a fun song. You know, he sent the song to us in like November or maybe October, and it was such a cool song for us to actually roll with. You know, it was fun. Ginger came through. He also had a lot of fun with it. Um, it's funny. We actually sent the song to Kidex and El Tito, and they didn't really feel it. But I could understand why, you know what I mean? Uh, because, I mean, as a song, it, you know, there's only so much you can say about, you know, a girl who's bad in December. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but it was, it was so cool. It was so cool to actually just go through the motions. Stilo came through. He waxed it. It was his shit. He just loved it. Um, yeah, man, we've had a, a very, very interesting December because of that song, actually. Wow. And, and in the intro, the message that you wanted to send was sent so loud, everyone heard, like, you're here to make a good man. Yes. And how, how, where, where did you, how did you get that sample? Like, do you know that verse in the Bible personally and you just put it on your album or you had to go research? <laughs> it's funny. I actually did have to go search because after having the entire album ready, <coughs> um, the song, that specific song came up. Um, and I remember that song when we were working on the song. It was like one of the last couple of songs that we did on the album. And I remember listening to the song and, and I remember Instro walking in randomly, like it was just like a random, 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 random. Um, because I always wanted to start the album with the realest verse ever. That was yeah, my intention. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to start with the realest verse ever because I you know that there was so much noise around that earlier. Um and then he walked in one day and I was like, Oh, this song would make a great intro. Yeah, and I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it stayed. So after a while it stayed and I was like, Wow, that's a let me listen to the song as an intro. So I started listening to the song as an intro to start the album. And I started realizing, wow, this is quite a strong message. You know what I mean? Yeah, well um, I'm reintroducing myself probably to people who already know who I am. 
But the reason why I'm reintroducing myself is because I'm cementing why you should know who I am. It's not, ne it's not necessarily the fact that you should know who I am, but it's more about why you should know who I am. You know, I think all great people in the world should be known who they are. You know, if you're on a website right now that's giving you great content and giving you great knowledge, you should know who's putting it together. <coughs> you know, the w if w the in history, you know, when you watch a great movie, everybody knows who shot the movie. Yes, we see the people acting and all that stuff, but who shot the movie? So, I, so it was quite a strong message in terms of in terms of the name, you know, the theme of the song started playing around the name. I do this in my daughter's name. I do this in my father's name. I do this in my name. I do this in Jesus' name. Um, but I'm not allowed to do this in Jesus' name because I'm not allowed to use his name in vain. But it's, you know what I mean? It was a lot of subjects that flew around. So I looked for a verse. Um, and I looked for a verse and a clip that spoke around the name. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I found the pastor from Nigeria. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about it. And it was, it was such a profound message. I actually found two messages from him and I had to pick one. Um, that was the one that I went with, yeah. Wow, man. That, it's a real, a real classic album that you put together. It's so nice. Thank you. From the start to finish, the way you organize the song. Thank you. So dope. So. But then, that controversy, the controversial picture that you posted. Yes, sir. Do you know that you want to react, have that, such a kind of reaction when you put it on Twitter? <laughs> a lot of people always actually ask me that question that did I know that people were going to react like that. I think I knew but I God didn't know. Real Christians in your followers, you know? Oh no, definitely. The thing yeah. is um I knew my my thing is my perception of my work and my music is that everything that I put out has always been within the hip hop community. So if yeah. I put out a song, the hip hop community is going to download it, they're going to listen to it, they're going to play it. And they're going to respond to And they're going to own and they're going to feel, you know, to that song. So when we were presenting this, we were looking at it as a conversation in the hip hop world. I thought the hip hop world was going to see it and they're going to know, they're going to want to know what's going on here, what's, you know? So I don't know about controversy, but I think it was going to start a conversation. That's what I wanted to do. Or we'll start a conversation around, yo, man, <clears throat> my entire life I've always been, you know, on this journey to be like this person because yeah. I was taught that in order for me to get to heaven and be with my maker, I have to be like this person. Yeah. But this one moment I wanted to express that I'm struggling to be like this person because of all the temptation and all the negative things that you see surrounding this good person. Yeah. And so the metaphor is like, it's just, it's the same picture for everyone in the world is that we all want to be a good person in the middle, but we're surrounded by all these evil things that you see on the side. Yeah. And, and that was a conversation I wanted to have with the hip hop community. But media took the image and made it an explosion of something else. You understand what I'm saying? People went like mad. And they went mad and they lost their minds, and rightfully so. I mean, I think if someone actually just took something and they showed it to me without context or explanation, you're going to get it without context or explanation. You understand? If the, if the, if the messenger gets the message wrong, it, there's bound to be problems. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. when we did that and we put that out... Uh, we did it on a Monday, but by, by, by the time Wednesday came, there was a huge you know, amount of confusion. Some people thought it was an album cover. Some people thought we were trying to be like Kanye West. Some people thought that we were anti-Christ. Some people thought this, some people thought that, some people thought this, some people thought that. And the whole time we were trying to actually break it down and say, yo, when you listen to the song though, yeah. that's not what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But what it was beautiful. It was beautiful because it taught me and it showed me the true colors of media. It showed me the true colors of people. It showed me the true colors of um, the understanding and perceptions that people have been taught. Uh, conditioning, you know? Yeah, Just yeah. The, even the debate of, is Jesus white with long hair and blue eyes? Is that Jesus that you see that's white with long hair and blue eyes? Jesus or, or what? Are we, are we going with the fact that he's Jesus or are we going with the fact that that's the image that we had and we were told is Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now that I've put shades on him, is that still Jesus? Because there's no way he'd be wearing shades and there's no way he'd be having two asses on top of his shoulders. <laughs> so it's definitely not Jesus. This can't be Jesus. You know what I mean? But that's an approach that I can't expect people to have when they see the image because of I don't know how, how it was presented to them. You know what I mean? When I look at the newspaper articles that popped off with that, I was like, mm, you literally made the story sound bad yeah. to a point where this person has no opportunity of even wanting to hear me out because you've presented it badly. Yeah. You know? And that's the thing about the middleman in media. is like, it's very unfortunate because the people are smarter and cooler and more informed than the media suppliers. Because the media suppliers, it's very rare to find an individual who's just rolling around in his hoverboard and he's like, yo, that's reason. 
Let's do an interview tomorrow. Let's tell these people about your album. Everybody else that you come and have a conversation with is like, so tell us about yourself. Tell us who you are. Do you have an album? Yeah. This, this. Now, if you're ill-informed and you have to send the message to the people, yeah. what kind of message are you going to send to the people? Right. And that's the problem with media. There's a lot of people in the media industry or in the media circles who we feed information to to feed to the people, but the people are actually way more ahead than them themselves. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. so when they send the information to the people, they send the wrong information to the people. And that's... That's what it taught me. It showed me all those loopholes that we have in the industry. And some, oh wow, these things that people think are good for you, controversy, trending, uh, making the whole world erupt and have a conversation about you, this, that, and the third, all those things. It's just like, what a lie. So, 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 that post really made me. That post put the internet on a standstill. Yes. Like the comments, man. They yes. Were the nastiest comments. Some of them were so rude. What were the meanest uh, comments that you read yourself? Sure. Uh, I read so many comments on that thing. Uh, the thing is, as much as I, I read a lot of mean comments on the, on the thing, I read a lot of people who got it. You know, there was a lot of people who also got it. There was a lot of missed reactions. The, probably the most drastic reaction I ever got, though, was on a radio interview, mm. where I was doing a radio interview with Power FM. Mm. And one of these, um, and, and a Christian called in, and he and, and and a Christian called in, and he he was he lost his mind. He was mad. He was saying, "What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Don't you know that we are extremists? Yeah, if this was a Muslim uh, 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 a person, you know, if this was the Muslim uh, uh, religious figure, you know, you would have been killed. And now you take advantage of the Christian one." And it was just like, "No, that's not what I'm trying to do." I mean, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, I'm saying that. This whole time I'm trying to, and uh, no, 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 we will find you and we will kill you. I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is live on radio. Like, they will find me and Are they will like kill me. This far now? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, By that time, I'd actually gotten to a point where I'd actually realized what had happened, but the only thing that I had was the music, you know? And that's the true reality of, of it all, is at the bottom line of that whole entire experience is, it doesn't matter what great things you can do outside of music or what bad things you can do outside of music. At the end of the day, the music will always win because that's what you are as, as a musician, you know what I mean? All that nastiness and all those problems didn't stop Yippie Kaye from being number one on the, on, the, on the top 40 charts on 5FM. You know what I mean? It's not stopping us from having great relationships with corporates, great relationships with TV, great relationships with radio, great relationships with everything. It doesn't do anything. It's just a moment of madness that happens in a month so, and then so, it just so keep it moving. So that post didn't affect the sales of God Your Religious Mission at all? No, 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 no. It didn't affect uh, the sales. I think it affected a lot of business yeah. to a certain degree. Um, only because of sophisticated clients and sophisticated market um, of their sophisticated market share, which is very, very respectful and understanding. But at the same time, in some other instances, it didn't affect much. You know what I mean? Like, we still worked with Sprite. We still did shows with Sprite. We still gave them business and this, that, and the third. We were fine there. They, it, that really, it didn't really bear so much on everything else that we were doing because a lot of my partners and a lot of the people that I work with pretty much understand the wave that I'm in, number one. And number two, they got it. You know what I mean? They didn't get the insults. They got the message. You understand what I'm saying? So relationships carried on. Life carried on. Our business carried on. And we moved on. Um, yes, we had like a bit of impact on a certain areas where some people just couldn't. You know what I mean? It was just too much heat, too much debate. You know, they didn't know whether we were going to win the conversation or lose it or that or the other. So it became a little sensitive. So they had to move away. We even, you know, were in a place where it's like, yo, this thing is looking some type of way. Maybe you want to fall back, you know. But other than that, there was also a lot of companies that we work with and do business with that were about it. They were just like, yo, man, we get it. We get it, you know. And we get the conversation. Some even liked the conversation. I had one of my sponsors call me and say, why didn't you tell me you were going to cause so much shit in South Africa? I would have hosted the Last Supper for, for Jesus Christ <laughs> because everybody's trying to bury you. Everybody is trying to kill everybody. We would have had an entire supper where we had the whole of media there yeah. criticizing you and, and trying to figure out what's going on. And because it's not ill and, it's, and because it's not bad, it's not because it has no bad intentions, oh. we had nothing to lose, you know what I mean? And that's the type of reaction, and that's the type of world that I found myself in where I even got to realize that, yo, on a client level, I need to associate with myself with people who 
are flexible enough to get what I'm trying to do and understand what we're trying to do yeah. a lot of the times. You know, where we can get into trouble, they see the possibility. Where we can get into, uh, into situations, they see the non-situation. Where they see like, yo, we might suffer underneath, they see the, 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 the us rising above, you know what I mean? So, so it didn't affect much, but it so did. So how has been the reception towards the album from fans so far? Beautiful, beautiful. Probably like the best reaction I've had for a lot of my albums. Yeah. Um, Mainly because I, I guess it's because uh, the kids may have only landed on Reason as a full product and as a full package with audio redefinition. You know, I think for, for the last two albums have been very specific to a specific type of South African, you know, um, especially with the messages. You know, I was speaking from a father's point of view. I was speaking from a husband's point of view. I was speaking from a son's point of view. I was speaking from an adult point of view, you know. Um, and a lot of things happen in and between that to a point where this album had a lot of young references of myself because I started living a young life to a point, you know? Um, so it references a lot of young, you know, elements that the young market has actually turned around and be like, oh, hey, that guy did a song. I'm about to turn it up. Let's do, let's turn up, you know? Um, so it's been a really, really great response. A lot of people buying it, a lot of people supporting it, a lot of people feeling like they should be behind it a thousand. Some people are buying copies for their sisters and family members and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I guess the only thing that's missing now is for us to just push it to the next, yeah. Okay. One big topic in SA Hip Hop, what is M since 2015? How do you feel about that and why do you think it was in the conversation? <sighs> Do you think like there is authority in hip hop? In music? No, there isn't, man. There's no authority in anyone putting together the hottest MCs. It's yeah. the, the hottest. Uh, the word hot is so relative. If you were to put together the hottest MCs and I was to put together the hottest MCs, and the girl outside was to put together the hottest MCs, it'll never be the same because it's not factual. It's not based on actual numbers. If you were gonna right. say, so for me, I've never really cared about those messages. My biggest list or the, the, the most important list in my life that I'd like to be a part of or that I want to be a part of all the time has to be the listeners list, you know? I wanna be every fan's top five rapper. I want to be on every fan's top five best albums. That's the list I want to be on. Because those are the people that come to the show and buy the music. Those are the people that come to the show and support us. And those are the people that make the MTV bases and all those people think that we are good. You know what I'm saying? So I've, I've stopped even worrying about all those things. I mean, that's the scoreboard. I respect it. But that's their scoreboard. You know, there's a real scoreboard out there that's working. That's real. You know, where people actually live and think about your music and your artistry far way more than what your video looked like or how many CDs you sold or this, that, and third. They're more concerned about the music. Like I said, the music. People land on the music and they say, this is beautiful music. This guy is our number one. You know, that for me has more integrity than someone saying, you know, ah, but, you know. But I respect it because what it does it is, is it actually shows me how the industry thinks. You know, it shows me how the industry thinks, how that channel views hip hop, how that channel views entertainment, how that channel views quality, how that channel views number one. It's, it, it's, it's all supposed to show you what their rating works like. Mm. So that to a point where if ever I was to care about it or I wanted to care about it, I would know exactly what to do. But right now I don't care about it. I okay. care about the okay. fans. You are a hip hop artist, but you are still a hip hop fan. Yes. How did you feel about the list in a fun way? Not like a rapper. Well, there's no female artist on the list. That didn't make sense. There's a lot of hot artists out there. Um, Nasty C is one of the hottest artists in the country right now. Exactly. He does not have any of the accolades that all the other guys do. He does not. He hasn't filled up a dome. He hasn't gone gold. He hasn't gone plat. He hasn't done anything. But for me, that does not take away from the fact that he is the hottest MC in the country right now. And so, as a fan, that's how I feel. Where was Nasty C? You know, where was Nomuzi? Because she's one of the hottest rappers in the country right now. Mm. Where was Fifi Cooper? What, you know, so, I mean, they had their whole thing. But as a fan, there's just a lot of people that are missing. There's always been a lot of people that have been missing. Last year, they didn't have OK Malum Cool Cat. Mm. I was on the list and I was like, fuck, where's OK Malum Cool Cat? I see me, but where's OK Malum Cool Cat? Why is OK Malum Cool Cat not on this list? This is when I, I was on the list. You understand what I'm saying? So. I'm I'm not emotional about the list. I'm not caught up on the list. Oh, sorry. I'm not emotional about the list. I'm not caught up on the list. I'm just saying like it's it's a list. You know, at the end of the day, life goes on. You know, nothing happened. 
You know, we don't even remember who number seven was. Nevertheless, your album is nice. Man. Thank you very your much. Your album is nice, but you emphasize on being the realist. Yes. How do you mean being the realist as an artist or as a human being? I think you should decide as a human being, you know, as a person, uh, when you listen to the music, you know, whether whether I am the realist or not. You know, personally, I think I'm the realist ever on all aspects. You know, um, I don't talk about the reality that people you. see. I don't talk about the reality that people see on TV and radio and all that stuff. I don't talk about champagne bottles and clubs and all that stuff. I don't talk about that. I talk about my life. I talk about things I see. I talk about myself as a South African. I talk about myself as... Um, a global citizen. I talk about myself as a, as a parent. I talk about myself in so many ways, and I'm very honest about it. You know, so I, I consider myself to be real, because you can you know about my real life by listening to my music. You know, um, and everybody else can be real about champagne, and drinks, and cars, and Rolexes, and all that stuff. That's cool, Absolutely. but can you be real about your life? Can you be real about your mom? You know, can you be real about your sister? You know, can you be real about, you know, losing money? Can you be real about being broke? Can you be real about, you know, I, as rappers, we like to be very selective with what we are real about. You know, as rappers, we like to be selective about what we tell people the truth. You know, I'm the truth. I'm the, but then when you tell the truth, you tell a specific type of truth, but and leave the rest out. That to me does not make you a truthful person. Yeah. So, so, uh, rap that. How how has rap that like? Affected your rap career? It hasn't affected it at all, actually. Rap Dads enhanced my rap career. I think, you know, people got to understand more what I was talking about in my music when they saw Rap Dads. Mm. Um, it's just not something that I think I'd be interested in doing myself, yeah, anymore. Oh. Yeah, it's a reality TV show, it's just a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So, where are we taking it to this one now? Are we going 4K now? <laughs> well, right now, uh. we're going overseas. That's exactly what we're doing. That's what 2016 is. 2016 is going overseas. I can't tell you much. I can't tell you what the plan is. I can't give you much information, but we're going overseas. That's for 2016. 2016, going overseas. International status. Okay, your last words, Cape Town fans, African fans, are like uh, My last words is stop piracy. Stop piracy. Piracy, especially this Facebook piracy. I don't understand this Facebook piracy. I keep preaching this all the time, and I'm going to keep preaching it all the time. You people out there who steal music and put it on data file host and then link it on Facebook, I don't understand what the fuck you think you're doing because you are worse than a person who's stealing money from me at a taxi rank and selling the CDs and putting the money in his pocket. You are stealing money from me and not even putting it in your own pocket. That is the worst type of thief. That's a thief who loses himself and, and allows the person who they stole from to lose which is like the stupidest thing ever. If you're going to steal my music, be smart. Make me realize that you're stealing it so that you can make your life better. But don't fucking steal my shit just to go have fun and show people that you're cool so you can have a lot of followers because you're affecting Cooley's check, you're affecting my check, you're affecting AKA's check, you're affecting everybody's check. And when you affect our checks, you affect society's checks because those checks are built on society and we use those checks to go and feed society with all this greatness. It's not easy for AKA to get on a song and say, black card rap star, look at my face. If he can't have the black card because you stole his fucking music, that's the bullshit. So for me, my whole thing is, Piracy is a waste of fucking time. If you're going to steal our shit, steal it and make money out of it. You know what I mean? I don't promote you doing it, but clearly there's no stopping you. You know, my thing is don't steal from us just to cripple us and cripple yourself because that's that's a waste of time. That's just being spiteful. It's the Sting Shuffle and it's Reason HD. <laughs>